Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And as part of the Ask Split Suit of Question series, a bunch of people asked hand history questions, and today's question comes from Terry. And Terry just wants me to review this 25 No Limit hand. So let's check it out. Okay, so in this hand, we're playing 25 No Limit 6 Max Online. There's a raise under the gun. Here decides the three bet, and in this situation, seat four is a 17-13 over 24 hands. So I don't hate the three bet in the sense that I love being aggressive, I love three betting, and I love seeing what happens. Now, 24 hands is not a huge sample size. This dude has been playing, you know, pretty snug over those 24 hands, but not in a way that we can confirm that with any sort of degree of certainty. So this is just one of those where, okay, if you're trying to set a dynamic, sure. Otherwise, you know, flatting here is totally acceptable as well. I'm not really going to fault you for either one too, too heavily. We end up getting called, go to the flop, check, and here decides to see bet for five bucks. So situations like this heavily boil down to hand reading. So let's think about what seat four could possibly have here. If we think about prefop, one of the big things I ask myself is, at what point does he stop coming over the top with big pairs, right? So does he only four bet prefop with kings plus? Is it something like queens plus? Is it tens plus? Whatever. So I'm trying to get a good feel for that to see if, okay, can I remove things like sets from here or are sets totally possible? And also things like pocket tens, right? Are there going to be things like tens, nines? eight sevens in their flat range or would they consider four betting a prefop so again these are just all the things that we have to consider the other big thing i think about is if this person has a lot of things like sixes through tens with ace king and that sort of stuff there's probably a decent chunk of hands in his range that he can just check fold in which case cool but if that's the case do we really need to risk five dollars to get that done or could we just go to 375 or four bucks instead so definitely make sure you're considering that stuff. The other thing I ask myself is if seat four has something like ace king, ace queen, king queen, anything like that, is this person likely to check call or check shove? Because if they're going to check shove more often, it puts us in a situation where we're going to end up bet folding our equity a large chunk of the time. And that's not really something that I ever want to be doing. So really heavily ask yourself how they're going to play things like overpairs, top pair, and obviously there probably aren't overpairs in this exact scenario, but just in general, that's a question you want to ask yourself. The more likely they're going to check shove it, do you really want to be bet folding draw equity? But as played, seat four just decides to check call, and then think about what they would check call with, right? Are they going to check call with things like ace king high, or are they most likely going to be checking with check calling with things like queen x or jack x, like maybe ace jack or that sort of stuff? So definitely make sure you're thinking about that, right? We don't just, especially when people have draws in the three bet pots, they just get so blinded by the fact that they have a draw, that they've been told to play draws aggressively, that they do things like this even though it may not necessarily be the best play. So if you think about the range of hands that seat four would check call the flop with, are they going to check fold any of that here, right? If they have something like queen X or jack X, are they really going to say, you know what, now is probably a good time to fold when I'm getting roughly two to one? No, probably not. So I think this is a situation where Hero is putting himself in a really bad spot rather than just checking behind and taking the equity. Because the check call range from seat four, unless it includes a tremendous amount of ace king, is probably going to be calling you a large chunk of the time. And not necessarily that there's a huge number of combos in there, just more that there's probably not a lot of fold equity in that range as a whole. Because remember, it's a three bet pot. They call the three bet out of position. Ranges inherently are just going to be pretty narrow in this situation, so finding fold equity I think is going to be really difficult, and you can prove it mathematically using a fold equity calculator. I just don't think that you're going to end up finding a lot of folds here unless you thought there was a tremendous amount of ace-king or... I don't know, pocket eights that might check fold the turn here. I just don't think there's going to be a lot of combos that can get away once the math rolls off the way that it does. And yes, we have a decent chunk of equity, but we're always getting it in bad when it happens. So it's just a scenario where, again, I'm not really in love with Hero's line. I think the sizing on the flop is eh, not the best. I think you can get away for cheaper if you're just trying to get fold equity from things like pocket eights and sevens and all that stuff on the flop. And then as played, I think the turn shove, well, yes, I love the fact that we're being aggressive, I think is a bit overly optimistic considering the fact that the check call range on the flop should be pretty strong and actually probably gives very little fold equity, if any. 
So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Terry, thank you very much for the great hand, and if you or anyone else has a poker-related hand or question, you can send it to me directly at splitsuit.com send, and if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there, and happy grinding!